Well, hello everybody, it's Cookie here, and today I am back with another tutorial. Uh, it's on No Man's Sky, if you watched my most recent video. It was just kind of like an update video saying that I moved downstairs. Uh, I, I kind of said that I've No Man's Sky came out, and I'm extremely addicted, which is why I didn't post yesterday. But I am posting this really late at night, because I put a full day's time into this game. It came out exactly one day and 17 hours ago. Wait, no, one day <laughs> and 17 minutes ago. And I have played a lot of that those, that amount of time. I slept for like four hours and then did chores for an hour and then I was straight back to playing. So I am completely addicted to this game. And I thought since I've played a fair amount, I am going to share with you my findings and just help everybody that's kind of new to the game with just what to do because this game is just all about exploration. So if you want to explore for yourself, which I highly recommend, then click off this video. But yet again, stay on the video because... I need views. If you've never heard of No Man's Sky, I wouldn't be too surprised because it's not a extremely well-known game, but it just came out yesterday if you've been paying attention to the past video. Yeah, it came out yesterday, and it is amazing, obviously full of bugs, but actually no, I haven't really encountered that many. I'd say around four or five, and I've been playing this a lot and exploring a lot. Uh, I've me and my friend Alex have just been kind of sharing knowledge with each other, like stuff that we found, and that's kind of what I'm going to be sharing in this video. So if you had a YouTube channel, I'd give him a shout out. Actually, he does. He doesn't post any videos, but I'll tell you to subscribe to him, so go do that, man. Yeah. Basically, one of the main things in this game is just exploring and finding things out for yourself. Across our journeys, we actually found out that you can upgrade your exosuit, which is insane because we were really desperate for more space in our exosuit, and that kind of came true. I mean, I believe you start off with like... 13 or 14 spots, I can't really remember exactly. Right now as I'm recording this, I have 25 exosuit slots, which is insane, I can fit so much stuff in there. Think about that the way you want to think it. But for real, there's a lot of ways to get exosuits, and it's not actually that hard. It just costs a lot of units, which I'm going to be telling you in just a minute how to get a shit ton of units. So if you really want to get a bunch of units, the best possible way to get them is just selling all of your resources. I mean, it sounds kind of stupid when you say it, but... Let's be honest, like, what are you going to do with them? If you run out of space, what are you going to do? Sell all of your unwanted resources. I mean, I found that platinum and uh, titanium and stuff like that wasn't too useful. So I never sold all of it because I, I always thought that I would need it for something. Uh, the only thing I really needed out of those two was titanium for repairing my hazard suit. So I would keep a little bit of titanium, but platinum I never really had a big mean for. And that sells for quite a bit, so sell all your platinum. Go through all your resources, sell whatever you think you're not going to really need, because you're going to get a bunch of it if you're exploring. By the way, the biggest tip I can give you is just explore. Explore to your heart's content, because that's, that's how you're going to find stuff. Just keep exploring all the planets, all the systems. This whole entire game is just explore to whatever you can do, and that's how you're going to get the best. But this tutorial is just going to show you where to explore and how to get good stuff. So the first real tip of the tutorial is getting money. It's really technically called units, but I'm just going to call it money because it's easier. I currently have about like 1.6 or 1.7 million or something like that, which isn't the best, but I did get it in just about a day, so that's not too bad. The way I got it was just going to planets and mining all of the gold on them. I don't know if it's just the systems that I've been going to, but if it is, then I've just been getting really lucky. Nearly every planet I go to is just full of golden pillars of just joy. I mean, you literally just go to these giant golden pillars in the ground, mine the shit out of them, and then you can get anywhere from like 100 to like 2,000 gold per pillar, and one gold, like just one gold sells for about 220 units, and if you get 2,000, that's like, that that's a lot. I don't want to do the math, but that's, that's a lot of money. So my main tip for units is just sell all of the stuff you've gained, like platinum and titanium, like I said earlier, just everything, I mean, plutonium sells for a good amount, it's not a lot, but you get a lot of it, so plutonium, platinum, titanium, especially gold. But for real, really, just go mine gold, f save it, put it in your starship, just empty out your inventory, fill your entire inventory with gold, and sell it, because it, I got like a million units every time I do it, and I sell it all just by buying exosuit upgrades, which cost a lot, but I'm gonna show you that next. So really, just to quickly sum up what I said about the units, is just mine gold, sell it, Mine platinum, sell it. Mine plutonium, sell it. And you got units. Done. Money. Okay, so the next thing, and probably what a lot of people are here for, is the exosuit upgrades. Uh, they're really everywhere, you just kind of have to look for them. But I know exactly where they spawn on any planet you go to. 
no matter what kind of generation it is or generated land, whatever planet you go to, there's going to be some exosuit upgrades and I'm going to tell you exactly where to go to find them. Everybody in this game wants more space. If you're exploring and mining and doing everything that the game wants, you're going to need more space in your backpack and starship. So I'm going to show you where exactly to find more space for your exosuit. What you're going to want to do is just go into a planet and if you're just like riding around the planet, eventually you'll see kind of looks like a weird triangle. It kind of looks like a triangle, but it's a drop pod. If you've ever played Halo or something, it looks like a drop pod from that and it's actually called a drop pod. You go to these drop pods and every time I've gone to a drop pod, I might be extremely lucky or extremely unlucky. There might be something insane in there. But every time I've gone to a drop pod, there is always an exosuit upgrade in there. The first exosuit upgrade you get is free. The second one is 10,000. The third one is 20,000. Fourth one, 30,000, etc., etc., etc. I'm on like the, tw I don't know, whatever upgrade I'm on, it's about 120,000 for the upgrade that I have to get. So it, it gets to be a lot. It really does. It's kind of a burden. But more space is completely worth it. And if you can't really find these drop pods on your own, a really good way is if you're finding a orange beacon on the planet, go to that orange beacon. You need a bypass chip, which is really easy. It's just iron and plutonium, which you can find anywhere. You build a bypass chip, and then you use it, and you can look for a shelter. So, like, it says, what do you want to find? And just click on shelter, and it will show you to the nearest drop pod. Sometimes it actually brings you to a shelter, but every time I've done it, and I think it happened, like, one time, but pretty much every time you click on shelter it shows you a drop pod. So that's how you get really easy exosuits. If you've been playing the game long enough and you actually have an Atlas Pass, you only need a V1, you don't need a V2 or 3, but if you have an Atlas Pass V1, you can actually go to space stations and every space station has a locked door in like the main area. Go through that locked door and then you got yourself another exosuit upgrade right there. Now that you have more space and inventory and everything is cool, you've got money and inventory space, the next thing you want to do is actually travel. I mean, getting warp cells and warping to new systems is pretty much a pain. I got lucky and got the recipe for it really soon. My friend Alex still actually doesn't have the recipe, which kind of sucks for him. But I'm going to show you where I got the recipe. Like I said, this video is coming out the day after the game came out, so I'm not showing you everything best 100% way, but I'm showing you how I've gotten to where I am. So yeah. The way I got a recipe for a warp cell is I went to a space station, I talked to a Vekin, Vikin, I don't know exactly how to say it, I think it's a Vikin, a Vikin warrior, and uh, I talked to him, I gave him what he wanted just by using the words, and it's really cool actually, it's kind of off track, but the game is amazing in the way that you just, you discover words and you can learn the language. Anyways, back on the tutorial, I talked to him, I gave him what he wanted, and he gave me the recipe for a warp cell, he basically said, hey man, pretty cool here and gave me a recipe for warp cell. So my recommendation to get a warp cell is go to space stations, just talk to people, go to outposts, talk to everybody, go to military resource checkpoints, uh, solve the codes there, talk to everybody, solve codes, eventually you'll get a recipe and it could possibly be for a warp cell like mine luckily was. Once you actually get the warp cell, uh, the warp cell recipe, the way you make it is you make suspension fluid after suspension fluid, you make electron vapors. After electron vapors, you make antimatter. And with the antimatter, combined with 100 thamium, I believe, you can get yourself a warp cell. And warp cells allow you to warp to new systems, because if you didn't have a warp cell, it takes about 27 minutes to actually get to a new system. And that doesn't include the stops you have to make to refill yourself. So you're going to want a warp cell unless you want to sit there for 35 minutes at a time to get to a new system. Personally, I have so many upgrades for my multi-tool, it's kind of insane. The way I get them is I just go to every question mark I see, I hop in my ship, drive to the question mark, well, fly to the question mark, and then usually if it's like a building, I go inside the building, and there's always these things on the wall that are just mili- not military, but they're multi-tool tech, and you click on it, don't click on it, but you hold square on it, and if you're on PC, then I don't know how you're watching this video, but if you're on PlayStation, you basically hold square, and then you get yourself a random piece of multi-tool tech. I've gotten shotguns, I've gotten rail guns. Really, it's insane. The amount of in, like possibilities in this game is insane. So now that you have multi-tool and multi-tool tech weapons, it's you're, you're pretty much ready. There's two more things I want to show you that I just kind of remembered now. You can actually get new multi-tools. I remember getting 
one from the one that I used for a long time. I remember getting one from someone that asked me to replace or he like I had two options. I was talking to him. I didn't really understand the language. The only words I knew that he said were replace and rare. Those were the only words I saw. I saw rare and then I saw replace. And this I don't have footage for this. I wasn't recording at the time, but the only, the only just imagine the only words I knew were rare and replace. And the two options I had was keep my gun or give him my gun. So I imagined, I was like, okay, he's saying something rare, and he's saying replace. So I gave him my gun. I allowed him to replace my gun, and I actually got a completely better version of my gun, which was insane. So knowledge stones are really effective 